Since 2005, the Wisconsin DNR's Snowmobile Recreation Safety and Enforcement Team has been trying to improve safety by focusing on serious violations such as operating while intoxicated and excessive speed. Hi there, Conservation Warden, can you shut this off quick? 76% of our fatalities last year involved uh, alcohol. You know, we had 17 fatalities, 76% involved alcohol, 65% of them were speed related. So the combination of alcohol and speed, it's just a terrible combination. They do not mix when you get behind the wheel of any vehicle. So the reason we're stopping you tonight is uh, the stop sign back there that you followed this guy through? Okay. Is there a reason you didn't stop for that? No. Okay. Just go ahead and get your uh, driver's license out and registration. Um, we have to have probable cause to make a stop for snowmobiling. So what that pretty much means is they have to be doing something wrong. Looking for you know, illegal roadway operation, um, in order to yield the right of way at a stop sign. Um, snowmobilers have the tendency to not make a complete stop. And regardless of whether the, the stop sign is, is small or large, they, it all means the same thing and they have to make a complete stop at the stop sign. Joe, how many drinks have you had tonight? Two drinks. Two. I we, we, we weren't there a half an hour. I can just smell it off you. Yeah. So, I mean, even through your mask. Yeah. So before before I let you take off here, I'm just running through a quick field sobriety check, okay? I'm not going to do one. Why won't you do one? Because I'm not going to do one. I mean, I'm not drunk, but I'm not going to do a sobriety test if that's what you want me to do. Here's, here's the way it works. When you get behind the, the a machine like this, Yeah. And you ride on a public trail, you're consenting to a, a legal test of your breath, blood, yeah. or urine. In order for me to rule out whether or not we need to go and do that, I can do some quick field sobriety tests right here. You understand? Okay. It'll be really quick. If you're good to go, you're good to go. I'll do that. Okay. Is that that sounds yeah, like the I'm, right option. Okay. Let's I'll walk do the that. line if you want me to walk. We're not going to walk the line. I'm just, <laughs> it's just, it'll be quick. No, I'm sober. Can you see tip my finger okay? Mm -hmm. All right, just tip your chin down a little, yes, little bit for me. What I'm going to have you do is follow my finger from side to side. It's going to go out of your field of view, but I just want you to keep following it to the best of your ability. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Blood alcohol content, uh, it varies. Um, there's been, we just had one last week in St. Germain. I think he was at 0.338, you know, so he was pretty high. Um, but yeah, you, see, you look at our fatalities from last year, you know, I mean, into the twos, into the threes, upper twos. I mean, that's two or three or four times the legal limit, which is a, a lot. Um, as you know, the legal limit's 0 .08. Um, you don't have to go very far from where we're sitting here now and you know, 10 o'clock to two, three in the morning, there's not a lot of sleds moving on the trails and they're all sitting at the, at the bars. You know, well, I can tell you they're not in there necessarily drinking hot chocolate and having hamburgers. Wireless is trying to lead the, the state now as far as accident reduction up here. Uh, this area here is kind of unique because a lot of our people are not from the area. A lot of these people have never been on a snowmobile. So they, they go and rent a snowmobile and they're off and enjoying the North Woods. We're doing a lot of follow-up investigation on why these accidents are happening. Back in the day, you were 16 years old, you can drive a snowmobile because you had your driver's license. Well, driving a snowmobile and driving a car are two different things. I mean, these machines are fast. They're very, very light. They're very, very responsive, and they, they're, they're fast. I mean, and, and you can get yourself into trouble in a hurry. Uh, I, I think, um, I've never looked at the speedometer while I'm going that fast, but I have a, a reading that tells me how fast it was going at one time, and it says 129. People kind of use their sleds as transportation and go bar hopping and, like, in my opinion, snowmobiling is more dangerous drunk than riding in a car just because you want to do you want to do stupid things on a snowmobile versus if you're in a car. So it kind of does. Um, I just wish that people would not not drink and ride. Right now, we don't have a, a snowmobile OWI snowmobile um, OWI tie-in with the driving licenses. Other states, you know, um, they got some form of it, like Minnesota and Michigan. And those states, when they've gone to a tie-in like that it's actually been proven that pretty much cut their snowmobile fatalities in half. Now, not to say that that's gonna happen here in Wisconsin, but you know, you start tying it into your, your driving um, license and it can, you talk about a deterrent, that can really deter someone from 
drinking and driving on a snowmobile. You know, if, 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 it's, if it's their first time, um, it's, it's a civil forfeiture citation. You know, it's somewhere in the ballpark of $650. And the bad thing is, is people, people know that. They know if they have never gotten a, a citation on a snowmobile before, that if they have enough cash, yeah, they might sit in jail for the night, depending on which county you're in, but that it's civil forfeiture in nature. They pay the fine and it goes on our DNR record. But besides that, um, nothing happens. Well, we don't want to spoil anybody's fun, but at the same time, we just want to make sure that, that people are doing it responsibly, that they're having a good time, but that they're safe when they're doing it. That's the big thing.